Lee Cow. I'm back. It has been the hottest minute since I've recorded Mass Effect. And it's even hotter now because it's June. And it's blazing. In my room, I have no shirt. The window is open. I think you can hear a little bit from outside. Just the general wind. And I didn't forget my place. But, man, I stopped like literally halfway through the playthrough. Uh, so just to give a tiny explanation, uh, kind of took a little bit of a break. I was working on other videos before this one. I wanted to mix it up a little bit. You've seen the how to, well, you better have seen the how to write romance video. The Mercy Sode, the Outlast videos, which I do want to go back to. But I, I kind of want to finish this. And I'm, I'm at a place right now where my schedule is the same but i don't know I've, I've gotten into the flow better so i'm more comfortable recording right now and it's been a little while so i want to record did i did i talk to joker i did i don't remember how much of this i went through i have to go so all right see you we're back to our character study of mass effect i guess is that, that's what we're calling it do 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 do. Hmm, there's a little bit of a scratch in my voice. I don't like that. Yes, Commander. Get Nothing. Yes, ma'am. Oh wait, there's a little bit of an echo. I'm sorry. There. Hopefully that'll do it. Open the door. Don't salute to me. Man. Oh, I should say. I've. I've now played Mass Effect Andromeda. <laughs> oh, yeah, I've played it. I've played it beginning to end. Uh, I finished it. I oh, I want to give my thoughts on it so badly. Um, God, well, I don't know where to start. Uh, I let me you know what. Let me do my rounds on all the characters. And when I'm doing one of their side missions, I literally just talk about Andromeda. That'll, that'll be what it is. Didn't I flirt with Caden last time? I'm pretty sure I did. God, it's hot. Some time to talk now, Commander. Yeah. Always. <laughs> yeah, it sounds like he knows that I was gone. Of course. Have a seat. We've played it pretty close. He didn't actually see it. But we're a long way from backup. We've got some tough calls to make. I'm just saying. Yeah. Try to leave yourself a way out. I've seen what cutting corners can do, and I'd hate to have. Oh. Commander. So he says this if you're kind of like a little bit romantic with you. Well, not really romantic. He he says this if you're female Shepard and you're like you're likable to him. Uh. Oh. It's a personal observation, Caden. Yeah. I um, I, I don't want to step on anyone else's toes. Oh, ho, ho, ho. this is the part where you can lock him in. I have misread your interests. Oh, I, I love... I, <laughs> as a guy pretending to be a girl who's potentially courting a guy, I, I love how nervous he is. I love how, like... I, I hate people who aren't self-aware of themselves and are too obnoxious, so Caden is like, I love him. He's a good guy. Off the record, permission to speak candidly, cross my heart, and hope to die. What are you talking about? That's uh, adorable. Dr. Tassoni, ma'am. There's a lower deck rumor that she's uh, interested in. Ooh. Source of both. Yeah, Liara has a bug where she kind of like interested is interested in you kind of regardless. Even if like you're a, a really mean to her. Culture. Um. Yeah, but this happens. This happens with Ashley too. Sorry, I want to fix the audio a little bit. I, I just got back and it's been like forever since I recorded, and I just want to make sure it's good. Um, this happens with Ashley too, where they both kind of like, oh, I, you know, I like you, but I've heard that the other person likes you too, and Liara does it too. We'll see in a second. Um, if you're kind of like nice to them a lot, honestly, I prefer this in Dragon Age Origins the most. In terms of like romance, because don't get me wrong, I like having clear and cut ties to romance and like, you know, 
knowing when someone likes you or not, or knowing when a dialogue is going to lead to romantic feelings. So it, what they've been doing since Dragon Age 2 is they have a really big heart icon. Um, Mass Effect 2 and 3 didn't do it. Uh, Andromeda did it. Dragon Age 2 did it. Inquisition did it. Um, but Bioware, by and large, have seemed like they want to make it as obvious as possible. Um, I prefer to just kind of, like, I, I honestly, because because the problem was their paraphrasing weren't, wasn't very clear. Like, are you jealous in, in Bioware history sometimes can make it like you're going to be really mean about it? Like, oh, I don't need someone who's the jealous type when actually this seems like it's being charming. You know, it's being, you know, it's being flirtatious. Like, oh, are you are you concerned that my interests lie somewhere else? Are you concerned that someone else might be after me too or competing for me? There's so many different in, uh, intonations on language, especially in Dragon Age Origins where there's there, your main character isn't voiced, that like it's hard to get down, but good paraphrasing fixes that. So I prefer just better paraphrasing rather than having a big heart icon that spells it out for me. It makes it seem more artificial and I just prefer this. Uh, you seem awfully worried about my personal Yeah, that sounds good. I like that. It's just that we don't have much downtime these days. And I like being around you, but I I don't want to take up your personal time. Oh. Look, there's nothing between Liara and me. What's the real issue here, Caden? You're right. Sorry. It wasn't uh Liara's not my main concern. I'm not questioning uh -huh. the decision you made, Shepard. Let me be clear about that. It's just my experience that once someone lets something slide, it tends to pick up speed. You get my meaning? So yeah, Caden is speaking to you from a place of personal history. He's just, you know, he he's seen what cutting corners happens in his life, and he doesn't want somebody to skirt the rule. Caden is very much a by the books character, and I've explained this before a little bit. But he's very much a character who is who he wants to do things the right way and he knows the right way is hard he knows it's it's hard to to not take shortcuts in life but he knows shortcuts lead to a slippery slope of not taking things seriously not having the right discipline and letting things slide and it kind of it's behavior that encourages itself because it's self-gratifying um and he has his own experience and perfectly he's willing to share that experience but he's not throwing it up at me like andromeda characters just throw up their past history he's like i have to probe him i have to ask him about that experience because like you know he's it's not a it's not something he wants to tell me about it's something he morden brings it up good in mass effect 2 there are two types of secrets one that you don't want to tell other people for their own good and another where you want people to just ask about it because it invites drama curiosity uh you know a cathartic feeling of you know expressing your emotions once you trust somebody it's it's a complicated situation but it's all part of uh social dynamics when it comes to human beings talk to me caden you got a little black rain cloud sitting over your head god i love shepherd's lines in these ah you know the rest that's hilarious the biotic training out on jump zero they're all classified uh. because the alliance made mistakes mm -hmm. after first contact kinetics was set. so this is very much like he's telling me he's saying at first contact pe the first attempt to deal with biotic humans you know what was that like it was messy because it's a it's a whole new medical field that like no one has any experience in and the only experts are aliens. Oh, well, I mean, here you go. He's gonna say it. Is there some reason we couldn't learn it on our own? They didn't know where to start. Hell, it took a couple of years to even link by Yeah. Forget trying to get the kids to move stuff. They had trouble just helping yeah. them not break their own limbs. And it's a lot. Teachers didn't help much. Who were their choice of teachers? The only experts would have to be aliens. You have to outsource the job completely. Actually. That's why Kinetics kept it a secret. They were afraid of... Yeah, because Turians were part of the first contact war back then, so there's a grudge against uh, humans and Turians. Alright. Sorry about that. Had to deal something. Um, but yeah, well, you know, if the Turians have such a grudge match against us and we have one against them, why not ask the Asari, who were way more diplomatic and probably would have done it? The Asari would have been more acceptable than the Turians. Yes, but the company didn't go through the Citadel. Uh, well, there you go. They wanted it off the books. So they discreetly hired... And there's, there are sorry mercenaries, though. That's kind of an inconsistency. Well, I was going to say that's an inconsistency, but the inconsistency is in Mass Effect 2 that makes sorry mercenaries. But, you know, even this game, there are sorry mercenaries. 
It's it's a that's a huge career market for them because they do like they do everything in life at least once. They go from strippers and mercenaries to like to moms to like grandma and spiritual leaders. They do it all at some point. But yeah. You know. I'm sure Canadians did what they thought was best. I, I'm I've kind of forgotten how I'm role playing, so this, give me a second to get my training wheels back on. Commander Vernus. Introduce himself. He likes to say. Wow, what a dick. He retired to Vancouver. My family had an inland home that matured to new beachfront. Verna sat it in for me after that. We cut corners, pushed hard. That's funny though. Came out of Superman. I killed your father in the war. It's like, sir, my my father is alive. Point of all of this, I guess. He's he's beachfront property right now. Not always obvious who pays for it. So yeah, so he's trying to say that Canadics cut corners, and he doesn't want that to happen here because he cares. And so, but what, but, but why tell me? So why are you telling me this? Is there something I can do to help you get over it? I'm 32, Shepard. You don't serve as long as I yeah. without coming to terms with yourself. You also learn that if someone is special to you, you help. I like this. I Caden is such a good character. I love him so much. He's so much better than that piece of shit in Andromeda. Liam? Liam is the worst. Liam might be the worst Mass Effect character ever. And I'll talk about why later. God. Anyways. <gasps> I'm special. Special, huh? If I'm out of line, just say the word. Ooh. You're not out of line, Caden. But there are regs. I get you, Shepard. I don't make a habit of complicating the chain of command. Just think about what I said. So, he's telling us because we have an important mission, and you know, he realizes that the pressure is on, and we're dealing with a lot of new ground territory right now. We're breaking new ground. We're fighting enemies that no one's fought for 300 years. And we're dealing with Reapers who have apparently never existed until 50,000 years ago. So, but that aside, and the importance of the plot aside, Caden has come to care for us personally. Which is really nice, and I love that line, where it's just like, so, are you still having trouble with this? You know, do you want me to talk to you about it? And he's like, I'm 32. It's fine. I've I've made my peace with it. It's fine. I love that. What's your? Cause it's so real. Of course he's figured it out. There aren't many aliens like that. At the age of 32. My stomach can take. Who wouldn't? I mean, some people, but still. Yeah. So yeah, they yeah, Just trying to get a sense of where the crew's at. Thoughts? I've wasted enough of your time for now. All right. We'll have time for personal debriefings later. So that's interesting. Talk later, Caden. Simply because, like, in 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 as, as male Shepard, like I think he's more willing to talk to you about the mission first. But female Shepard, he's talking about his own personal feelings first. Oh my God, I've not checked my equipment in like months. Well. All right. Oh God, this is gonna take for oh a new gun. Yay. Well, I'm gonna have to clean that up later. Anyways. And like I said, you never have to talk to Chakwas again until one point later, but that's it. Hey, Liara, what's up? Man, this is gonna be. I've wasted so much time on Caden. Commander, are you coming to check up on me? Literally the same dialogue as last time. Um, compared to the Asari in Mass Effect Andromeda. Like I said, Liara's very much the atypical damsel in I mean, sorry, not atypical. Typical damsel in distress where she's smart, she's brainy, she's into you, she's she's tough enough to be a help to you and knowledgeable enough to, you know, be your expert and, like, endear herself. But she's not... She's socially backwards. Um, which makes the romantic angle kind of more alluring because it's exciting and it's interesting and it's kind of funny. Um, it's very similar to what they do in, with Meryl in Dragon Age 2, where Meryl is smart in her culture, but they too, but they make her seem stupid because she doesn't understand human culture. Um, You're in good hands, Dr. Ch it's, I think they went overboard with Meryl, but it is cute and endearing, and Meryl does have a really spunky personality, and I like it. Uh, anyways. 
Maybe we could pick up where we left yeah, off. Let's pick up where we left off. Tell me about let's, your let's talk about Liara and the Pro Yeah, they basically just made Liara again with the, uh, the character Andromeda PB, which I still think is a terrible name. Um, except PB PB is even more antisocial. She's even more crazy about ruins. I did not read and like she's she's a she's a, a more extreme version of Liara. Seriously. Um, except she's a bit more hypersexual. With like you know she she's. She she does she does what Jack does in Mass Effect 2. She confronts people with sex casually, but takes intimacy, like actual intimacy and trust, to like you know different levels. She she treats that as more dangerous rather than casual sex. Um, whereas Liara is just inexperienced with sex, which I don't think we've learned yet. But uh, she'll tell us eventually. I think she'll tell us if we're in a romance with her. We don't have the luxury of time. And Asari can live for a thousand. So yeah, this is a good conversation because Liara hasn't met a lot of humans, and Asari's lived for you know thousands of years. Uh, sorry, like for a thousand years roughly, so hundreds of years. I think it. Um, so she's examining what's it like to be human compared to other aliens, and it's interesting. I like it. You pursue. you know, short lifespan means you try to be more active before you die. And Salarians have super short lifespans; they live like 40, 50 years, compared to like in this timeline, humans live like a hundred and something. You're scared of us? Unfortunately, the rest of the galaxy... I could see that. Something of a bully. There's a conversation on the Citadel, we might have already seen it, where two aliens, a Turian and a Volus, are trying to... are, like, talking about how humans have come so far in only, like, 20 years compared to some people who have never, like, who have, who have been here for hundreds and haven't even gotten as much. It's weird. And it's it's more of that humans are special uh, part of narr of fiction. Um, I don't like it, but this game underplays it a bit and makes humans work for it, which I really like. Um, why me? Yeah, why me? I don't want to do that. The council chose you to become a specter. They saw something special in you. The best of also, I'm not short and stocky and know how to hold a gun. To your history. Looking at you, Volus. The fact that you survive shows a. So yeah, this changes depending on your background. All the background details of this game they're small, but you know they help here and there. Why are you so interested in me? I wanted to know more about you. To understand what uh. made you into the woman you are. There is something uh. compelling about When she says, when she says that for the male shepherd, she says like, well, let me do it for you. She's like, what made you into the man you are? Yeah, it's a lot more like, I mean, it's just, you know, of course it is. You know, it's a little bit more sensual. It's a little bit more, it's a little bit more filled with meaning, loaded. You're interested in me because of my visions. You just want to know more about the Protheans. So I'm not really interested in Liara as a character that much. Your connection. But like, I'm. I can also tell she's kind of immature. So my shepherd's just like, eh. But it has grown. Like you're young. You are clearly not sure what you know you feel. It was appropriate to act on my feelings. I thought there might already be a relationship between. <gasps> ah! How scandalous. Um, this, yeah, and this is them talking about, like, oh, but you're a girl. And it's like, no, we're monogendered. So that doesn't really mean anything to me. So, yeah. I like Caden. I do care about Caden a lot. He's a vital member of this team, and a friend. And maybe I like like him. No. I'm not interested in you in that way, Liara. I'm not. This is very embarrassing for me, Commander. Please. Let and she just drops it. Else. Which is like, you know, fair. This the trilogy was very much loaded with with like, oh, you know, it's it seems very much tuned towards Liara being your romantic interest because even if you're just her friend, she's so goddamn present in the plot. And like even her DLC in Mass Effect 2 makes it seem like, oh man, don't you miss her? Like, man, she never stopped thinking about you. And it's just like, well, I don't, I don't care. Like, if she really missed me, she would be helping me. But she's not. Anyways. What's love got to do with it? Got to do with it? What's love but a secondhand emotion? Ooh, that was good. What's love? Anyways. 
I'm gonna try and wrap up everyone's conversations. Uh, but yeah, PB in Mass Effect Andromeda as a character, she's cool. I don't mind her. She's not the most offensive character when it comes to, like, annoying girl archetypes who are, t like, total loners. Um, it's okay. Looking for supplies? But, like, her, 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 her story arc, her, her own character arc was very much obvious, in my opinion, where it's like, oh, she's gonna learn to get along with everybody. That's, that's the arc. She's gonna learn to be part of the family. Um, okay. I don't know what I can sell right now, to be honest. What's this? Bye, Bob, bye, back. All right, well, I'm done here. All right, uh, I don't think, Gar oh, everyone has the personal quest, so yeah, they're gonna talk a lot. Oh, well, well. Commander, good to see you. That's gonna happen. A while. Have you seen much action? Well, not as much as you, but yeah, I've seen. Some yeah, Garrus. Garrus has been more or less the same character through all three games. Although I'm happy in Andromeda, we finally get a female Turian as a companion. In the Omega DLC for Mass Effect Three, we get we get Nyx, who is mentioned in Andromeda, of course, because even though we want to get away from the Mass Effect trilogy as possible, let's keep referencing it every five seconds. Uh. Bet you have. But yeah, no, I like Vetra in Mass Effect in Mass Effect and Drama. But Vetra's a really good character. Vetra is a character who's like her what she cares about is really obvious, really relatable, and like I get it. It makes sense. Uh Garrus is talking about one of his most disgusting cases. Or most his toughest cases, probably. One of his toughest cases. Um but I'll just take this as a moment to talk about Vetra. Vetra is has a little sister she very much cares about, and she's a smuggler. She does bad things to go places in life. Um, she's she's basically been an orphan, taking care of her sister because her dad's a deadbeat and put them in debt. And her mom was proper society, and they got away from her, and they don't like her. Um, Vetra's cool. Vetra's one of those characters that she's very competent. Um, so there's not much to really do with her other than have her be competent or have her like adjust to something in life because she's old. Um, like you help her adjust to, you know, being a parent to her sister, which you know it's okay. I I don't know. You've seen this before. On this it's I remember I remember liking Vetra a lot as a character. Um, not as many opportunities to flirt with her though, as as the human love interest Cora and PB. I think Vetra Vetra is also she she's romanceable for male and females too. Maybe that's why. I don't know. But Vetra's okay. I, I'm not too offended by Vetra. Liam sucks. Liam sucks so bad. So how did you I figure out him. what was happening? He does not belong on the initiative. Anyways, uh, we're talking about a uh, an organ smuggling ring. What's it called? Organ. Uh, there's a name for it. He said it. I wasn't listening because I was talking about how much I hate Liam and like Vetra. Uh. Oh God, that's the that's the that's a plot. No Salarian hearts. I mean, no, no, that's this that story he just told us. That's like the plot to a movie with with uh, Ewan McGregor, where he's a clone and they harvest the clone organs. Uh, except the clones are alive because the organs have to be good, uh, and Krogans have four testicles. You're kidding, right? So he's he's flash cloning people inside their bodies and cloning like two hearts, three balls, four livers, and then harvesting them and stuff. But that doesn't stop them from buying. Pay up to 10,000 yeah. credits each. That's 40. 000. So that's that's where you hear that Krogan's have four balls. Somebody's making a killing out there. Yeah. What'd you do? Literally a killing. I brought in some of his employees for interrogation. Yeah. Anyways. If I could get them to talk. While I was interviewing one of them, I came across something suspicious. What? Yeah. Go on. Just when tell me. He started bleeding oh God, my heart. My cloned heart. Ah, my cloned heart. He got frantic, freaked out. Man, if I had a heart attack on camera, found it that would suck. All over his body. Some of them yeah. That was on big break. These people weren't just Dr. Salion's employees. They were his test tubes. Walking. That's pretty, uh... That is interesting. He was growing parts inside these people? You bet he was. He cloned their organs right inside their own bodies. Then he yep. Harvested them. So he didn't say it. I spoiled it. Most of the victims were Pay them each a small percentage of the sales, but only if the organs were good. Yeah, if it, they didn't, grow properties. he just leave them. He basically left like a thousand appendices, appendix. Wait, hidden so nobody could see. Appendixes? Appendici? 
I hope he got what he deserved. I don't know. I'd probably Google it. We never caught But I won't. Why not? What the hell happened? He ran. So this is very important to Garrus's overall progression the nearest space dog. as a character. Garrus's character arc is all about it's it's the classic cop movie. Which it's very traditional, it's very tropey, but I'm willing to let it slide the first time because this, this story is doing it for the first time. Uh, but this is similar to Caden's thing he just told us about cutting corners, but that's not Caden's entire thing. Um, Garrus is very much about like, am I hard on criminals and don't give them a second chance? Or do I not turn into a murdering psychopath and give people the benefit of the doubt? That's basically Garrus' whole arc. Um, up until the end of Mass Effect 2, where he stops, where he becomes more mature, and he realizes that the world isn't black and white, uh, and then in Mass Effect 3, he just becomes, Mass Effect 3 is the best version of Garrus, because, like, he finally gets it, that it's not simple, that there are hard decisions to make, and none of them are easy. It's not worth the risk. You pursue the vessel and disable it. That's the best choice. They sent the military after him, but he got away just the same. Yes, they did. I went to Patton and told him what I thought of him and his policies. He said if I didn't like it, I could quit. But oh, that was a weird dialogue skip. I didn't understand that. All they had to do was disable that ship, stop him from running. Maybe the hostages die, maybe they don't, but at least eh. they the bastard responsible for it all. I suppose I can see both sides. But what's done is done. I suppose. Can't waste too much time worrying about it. So, I just wish I could have stopped. Yeah. Do you have any idea what happened to Dr. Salian? So, Garrus, Tally, and Rex. Did I get them all? Yes. Yes, they all have personal quests you can go fulfill. These are like the prototype version of loyalty quests that we got in Mass Effect 2. And then we didn't really get them in Mass Effect 3 because the whole game is about celebrating these characters. Uh, Andromeda does them again. And Andromeda's... God, Andromeda's, Andromeda's loyalty quests range from garbage to like pretty okay like Cora's is good but it turns Cora into a fangirl which is really annoying um Liam's is really stupid but it has the best level design of any of the levels in like almost the entire game I think which is really a waste um who else uh Jaws the the alien the Ongaran the new alien his is the war his is terrible because the dialogue the dialogue the the shooting of the cutscenes they're all terribly shot like, they make no sense. Drax is good. The, the Krogan in Mass Effect 3, his is good. His is, doesn't offend me at all. Uh, PB's is fine, but, like, it's annoying. But not as annoying as Liam's. What do you want, Shepard? Uh, hey, what's up? Why did you become a mercenary? Hey, what's up, Rex? It's been a long time no see. Lots of reasons. Yes. Such as? Um, who else? Such as? I needed to get out of our city. God, I don't know. I needed to eat. I can't even remember all. Vetris is fine, but it's got some it's got some interesting ideas for Vetra. Cause it's basically watchdogs where you can control the cameras and makes cool stuff happen. But some of it's too annoying. Like there's one section where you need to escort some survivors somewhere and it's really annoying. But other than that, it's it's kind of okay. You get to see a cool I do you get to see a cool level? I think you get to see that cool moon, but it's really small. Um Who else? I can't remember all the, all the characters, for God's sakes. Uh, Jaw, Liam, Korra, PB, Vec, uh, Vetra, Drac. No, I talked about them all. If I did, then guess what? They're not that important. Why not stay and help your people? Um, Tried to help, but yeah. To leave. But these are really simple. Like again, Mass Effect One has a timer. We're here to stop. Si we're here to stop Saren. But like. We are exploring the galaxy looking for leads. You know, none of them ever go anywhere except for the main story ones, but still. But yeah, these are very much kind of the prototypes for what ended up being loyalty quests. Uh, yeah. One of the few At the end of the day. Drac in Mass Effect 3 is cool, but he's just a really, really old Krogan. Like, the coolest part of his story is that you find out that, like, most of his body is implants and he's, like, falling apart. That's really cool. I like that. Like every fight could be his last. I love that about him. Matter who. Um, Rex is talking about here how he left his home system, and he actually tried to make things better before he left. Um, but he ended up failing. What did you want? I just wanted Jared to shut up, to stop yeah. ranting. Sometimes people just need to shut up. Leading the tribes astray, but he couldn't understand how much things had changed. 
we didn't yeah. have the numbers to go to war. So yes, this was after the rebellions. Probably some time after the rebellion, because I don't think Rex wasn't alive during the rebellions, as far as I know. Yeah, Re Rex was, is actually atypical. Is, an, is actually an atypical Krogan that he doesn't really care about war. He actually wants people to survive. Call it like, you know, he he's the exception to Krogan sociology, but you know he's yeah he is. That's what it is. Most Krogan are just kind of thick-headed and think about war. Some some are the exception, but it's you know, whatever. I take it the warlord didn't appreciate that. No, he didn't. By the way, calling a meeting a crush is really cool. It's like how a, a group of crows are called a murder of crows, or how tigers are called an ambush of tigers. It's the coolest thing ever. Our ancestors. The skulls. Just a bunch of cool names here. There to remind us where we come from, where we all go. So yeah, Krogans are very much all about death and fighting. Sacred as any Krogan place can be. Violence is forbidden. Sounds like a trap to me. You must have suspected as much. I did. <gasps> father invites you to a crush. Well. So yeah, Jared was his father. We hold sacred. Rex, I am your father. Jared was your father? <laughs> he was. Until that day. Until we that talked, day. But we didn't get anywhere. When mm -hmm. it was clear that I wouldn't join him, mm -hmm. he gave the signal. For lunch. His men left from the graves of our ancestors. Oh, nope, nope, not lunch. Undead. The few that were loyal to me. That was pretty cool. Quickly. It's a really dirty trick, but that's a really cool trick. But not before. I bet it looked really impressive. I dagger deep into my father's chest. That is why I left. So yeah. And that's why I'll never go. Back. Rex is really fucking cynical. And he has a good reason to be. When you try to make your hometown better. And you have to stab your own dad in the back to do it. It's kind of not worth it at that point, is it? Have family other than your father. Don't you miss them? So Shepard's gleaming into his life a little bit. Hi, Shepherd. To see if it's all that bad. I've got some unfinished business with my family. Man, what a really toned down episode. Uh, for me. Go on. What kind of business? <sighs> Tell me more. Tell me more, tell me more. My father's father. Did she put up a fight? I no, Kaniki. my family's battle. That's wrong. It was taken from him after the uprising. But oh, so right. Armor. What's so important about this armor? What's so important about this battle-ready armor, or bra as we call it? But it was worn by five generations of my family before. Yeah, the war. it's cool. It's rightfully mine. Yeah. So this is a waste of time, but it means lots of wrecks. Or weapons after the war. Now it's in the hands of Ton Actus, a Turian scum who collects relics from the war. Oh, a hive of scum and villainy. That were stolen from my people. The people. Several bases where he stores his goods. Okay. All fortified and guarded. I just don't know which base has my family's armor. Just tell me where to start looking. Funny enough, the, the first place we start looking is the only place it is. Like, I get the feeling they wrote that dialogue. It's like, oh, we could have the character explore around different worlds to find Rex's armor. And it's like, you know, it'd be... But no, there's no there's no more than one place. It's it's one place you explore for the armor. That's, that's it. All right, uh... Oh yeah, and Ashley and Caden and Liara don't have uh, loyalty quests. Liara's quest in and of itself is picking her up, so that's her loyalty quest. Um, and she does have an extra moment on Novaria, but I won't talk about that yet for anybody that hasn't seen it. Um, and Ashley and Caden are both part of the plot when you first kind of start, and they have a special moment between the two of them on Vermeer, but I won't spoil that either for people who haven't played. Commander? How are we doing? What's your opinion of the last Isn't um those Isn't Ashley supposed to like? Oh, I guess that's not a year yet. I guess that's after the next mission. Given the option, I get the hell out of Dodge. Yeah, I like Ashley. Do you have a few minutes to talk, one on one? She's relatably flawed as a character. We saw Caden. Oh no, it is now. Normandy, he's cute. Later, sis. <laughs> Let's pretend this never happened. 
<laughs> so yeah, if you're male shepherd, you walk in on that conversation. And if Ashley likes you enough, it changes to her sister says, oh, Shepard's cute. Uh, but if she doesn't like you very much, it's Caden's cute. And if you're a female, obviously, it's Caden's cute. Are you interested in the lieutenant chief? No, ma'am. And anyway, Scuttlebutt says he's already. Scuttlebutt is Rex, by the way. What's up? You didn't come by to eavesdrop on family mail. Yeah, he's interested in me. Meow. Your family seems to be important. So Ashley's a family girl. Yeah, we've always been. Close. Ashley's probably tied. Especially with dad. For me, when it comes to like my, I'm a little far from the mic. Sorry. Uh, Ashley's probably tied for me for like canon romance for male shepherd. Um, it's between her and Miranda in Mass Effect 2. Just because they're such box art girls. And like they have, well, Ashley has way more content than Miranda, unfortunately. Miranda gets the shaft in Mass Effect 3. Which I think is totally unfair. And if we ever get there, I'll talk about it. Oh, Jesus Christ. Alright, if you guys want to know more about Ashley's relationships with her family, you're going to have to listen and just read. Because I'm going to talk about something else that's more important. I'm sorry. But the, the gist of it is, she likes her family. Did your father serve with All right, so I'm here to talk about Korra in Mass Effect Andromeda. That offered space time. Because Korra is a combination of Jack from Mass Effect 2, Miranda from Mass Effect 2, uh, and Ashley from Mass Effect 1, because Ashley from Mass Effect 2 and 3 is garbage, and someone didn't know how to write her. Um, Korra likes poetry, like Ashley. She's second in command and has issues with being the next leader, like Miranda, and she's a person who feels like her biotics make her an outsider like Jack. Korra should be the most perfect companion, female companion character ever, but she's not. They dropped the ball super hard. What about your mother? And it's, oh god, it's so unfortunate. Must know military wives it's so unfair. Because they have to be the problem is, is that they make, Korra's cool at first, but she doesn't have a lot of content. She has a and then when they, she starts having content, it's all about how she's a fangirl for Asari's and like Asari Huntresses, but she doesn't tell us like almost anything significant about what it was like. And like, I don't think she even says why she was let go from the Asari Huntresses. She's just looking to belong in life like Jack. They end up just dropping the ball. Like, she ends up just, like, her her overall arc is just like, oh, I want to be good enough to the people I idolize, but I'll be good enough for myself. But, like, it, it's it's handled in such a childish way that I'm just, I don't take it seriously. Uh, you have more than one sister? It's, like it's they just don't do that much with the character. Yeah, and it's just, there's just not, there's just the lack of presence there. Sarah. When really, she should, she should have, like, the greatest presence. With four girls, Dad used to say... It's, uh and she has some really cool like ideas here and there about planning her guardian about uh, planning for the future i think a lot of Korra's problem comes down to how andromeda is just it, it's written with such a childish and immature atmosphere which is cool it's interesting i i appreciate the different take but eventually it gets old and no one ever learns from their mistakes and no one ever learns to actually mature things where did you grow up in, in, in a situation that demands maturity they never get mature which sucks uh, you go where and like, man, it's just they drop the ball on it. That's why I'm so tight with my sisters. And like, Cora is cool, but I, I, it's, it's, mm, yeah, it's rough. Um, Cora, Cora in concept is a really great character, but they just drop the ball on her. They drop the ball on her. They don't do enough with her. They make her her goals really childish. They make her resolution kind of just I don't know like it's 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 just no impact to her resolution like she learns one of her idols is actually not that cool and then she learns that like she she stops kind of being jealous of you but it, it's it's not in a way that's it feels like it's an adult you know way of storytelling but anyways back to me you're lucky to have a close family oh, sorry I forgot about your family situation yeah if you forgot Shepard's family's all dead or lack thereof this episode's gonna be super long. I'm so sorry. Ask me to clear a bunker of armed hostiles. This is what happens. Problem dealing with a foot in my mouth. Not so good with that. Not so good with that. Tense between Sarah and me for a while. Then we. Oh God. Okay, so I know I'm. I'm so sorry because this isn't fair to Ashley's character. We're basically learning that family is really important to her. It's really important, and I'm tired of it because i It's hot. And I feel like this episode is too long. Sounds like a story. Don't so I'm sorry. 
Sarah got herself a boyfriend who wanted to go fast. Uh, Mike. This kid, this I'll say this much. I'll talk over her and say this much. Her her story is a lot better if you're male shepherd because you can see uh, Ashley's relationships, her sister's relationships with other people, and say, okay, what's my relationship to Ashley? It's 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 cre it's again. This is more anecdotal storytelling that lands really well when you have the time to go over it. I just don't feel like I have enough time to give it the credit it deserves. Um, this was only a couple of years back. They were on Amazon. But like, on, honestly, this story made me want to see who Sarah as a character was in Mass Effect One. Like, she sounds awesome. She sounds like she's an amazing fighter. Anyways, no means no. But I like this line. Yeah, of course. If he didn't ask at all, I'd wonder if he thought Sarah was ugly. Sarah was ugly. You do, damned, damned if you do, damned if you don't. Mike thought they'd go for a romantic walk. Yeah, that was cute. I, I always like that line. It, it's very. I like that because it's very much the feminist ideal of like, like I'm not a sex object, but I have the right to be a sex object if you have my permission. I like that's what I like about it. It's like you know you should you should be allowed to fall into stereotypes if it's what you want. There's no reason that says you can't. But you shouldn't be treated like you are the stereotype. And Mercedes was here. I, I hope she would disagree. I mean, agree, agree. Tell the police. She said it wouldn't solve the real problem, and she and Mike. Would and yes, yeah, Sarah is the so most mature child in in the galaxy, apparently. Like seriously, she seems awesome. You said all of your sisters learned self defense. Oh man, this is my own fault. I keep pressing investigate, so really, this is my fault. Kind of nervous. Sarah took so Sarah took Aikido because she's the coolest one. Decided to learn the sword. She always was a little weird. Likes big skirts and the sword though. They do great things to her figure now. What did you do? So what did you learn? One of Dad's friends taught me Marine hand to hand. Yeah. You traveled all the way home to walk your. Sister. And that yeah. It was only a dozen. Miles Ashley's a dedicated woman. A day's cruise. It's not like it was going to Earth or something. She's feisty she's protective she's this is all just character building and giving her a situation of like what it's like for her family and what it's like for her life you know you're not gonna get in into her life or any other part of her just because you ask like you gotta prove yourself you gotta be there you know and don't judge oh, I skipped it no oh, I'm so sorry thing I knew he's face down on the sidewalk and there's blood everywhere that's unbelievable. So uh, you. This is a mess. Better. I'm more or less a straight up puncher. <laughs> oh god. She wasn't there anymore and he fell. Yeah, that's makes Sarah the coolest character in the Mass Effect Galaxy. The coolest unseen character. Before they took him to the hospital, Honestly. Mike took All that character needs is biotics and she's the coolest one. Again. Coolest character ever. He hung his head, whispered, I'm sorry, and started crying. And she hugged him. She's basically Jesus. Maybe Joan of Arc, but like cooler and hotter. You know, but like hot for our time. Anyways. Your sister's something else. But you didn't mention your father at all. Was he on deployment? Dad always wanted to serve in space. But he wanted us to have real ground under our feet. He'd say space. Man. Well, I only have Tally after this. So, I might as well just blow through it. And Tally's not going to say very much if she even says anything. Where have I made progress in the galaxy? What systems have I checked? Oh god. Anyways, this is when you learn Ashley likes poetry. This is actually where my love of Tennyson came from. I never thought I'd hear you reciting poetry. Just because I can drill you between the eyes at a So yeah. Doesn't mean I can't like sensitive stuff. Just don't spread it around. Ulysses was my dad's favorite poem. Every time he shipped out, he recorded me reading it. Yeah. He had a dozen versions when he retired. Does he still That's cute. I sure hope so. I read it to his grave every time I go home. Dad passed on a few years back. He's probably still watching, though. Oh. You mean from wherever we go after death? Dead on Skipper. He's with God now. Yeah, I like that nickname. That's not a like problem Skipper. with you, is it? That I believe in God? No, of course not. Everyone has the right to believe what they want. Says so in the Alliance Charter. Fancier words. I'm glad you're open-minded about it. I've met a few people who are really weirded out by my faith. 
Yeah, there's a lot of good options there in the conversation. You can choose to relate to her and be like, oh, no, I'm religious too, or whatever. But, you know, it's, it, this is an interesting conversation to have. You're talking about your place in the universe and having a family life while in the galaxy. It's like, it's a lot. And the commute is huge. And it's like, it's it's interesting. It's an interesting conversation. As long-winded as it is, it's, 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 now that I think about it, it's, it's good to have such a grounding piece of the narrative. Like, be like, oh, that's what it's like to walk your girl, just your sister to school. And like, and we're talking like, and there's an alien right there. Right there. Like it's it's a really grounded piece of the narrative to hold on to, and I, for one, appreciate it. And I, I still hate the fact that this episode's probably gonna be super fucking long. But you know, you win some, you lose some. Shepherd, I'm glad you're. Here. Oh, I'm glad you're feeling better. Good to see you smiling again, so to speak. Yeah. I'm sleeping much better now. Yeah, good for I you. I'm getting used to how that being said, I, I know I talked about how Ashley and Miranda are like my canon love interest for Shepard, male Shepard, but I, I like Tally a lot. I like Tally in Mass Effect 2. And 1. 3? She's okay. Like, she's good. But she's wrapped up in a plot and she comes like, she comes like two-thirds way through the story. So there's not a lot of time left. And in the Citadel DLC, the Citadel, okay, I'm going to say it once right now. The Citadel DLC was exactly what the Mass Effect franchise needed at that point in time from a meta-narrative point of view because it was all too depressing and ruined, so we needed fan service. Because it, it is just blatant fan service. But, it's, but in retrospect, it is too much fan service. It is far too much. And if we ever get there, if you ever see me playing it, I will explain to you why it's so much fan service. It is blatant, an almost gross amount of fan service. I loved it at the time, but it is blatant fan service. Long way to go. And I, it, it gets a pass, but only so far. Just be some derelict ship my people can use for sound. Uh, why? To be more than that. There's a lot expected of me. So Tally's talking about a pilgrimage. It's my father. He's the senior member. And she's talking about how her dad is like important. People who can overrule the decisions yeah. of the conclave for the good yeah. of the migrant fleet. He's not royalty. He's part of the military, and uh, Korean Korean society is kind of martial lawed a little bit because of their low population numbers. Not royalty. I'm gonna skip that because I already said it. No, it doesn't work that way. No, it's not hereditary. Officially, I'm just the same as any other citizen. Uh, preferral treatment. Nope, I'm sorry. I, Tally, I love you, but I have to start going faster. I probably had it easier than most growing up. All right, that's a lot of pressure, Tally. Tell me about it. Tough on you. My people place a high value on Yep, Corian's value family and ancestry, because guess what? They don't have that much of that left. Father's example. Keep going. Keep going, woman. Come on. You can do it. I believe in you. Go, 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 go. Talk, 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 talk. Like I failed, and that reflects bad Feel bad. And my father. What if we save the galaxy? The work you're doing here is more important than anything any Quarian's ever done before. Yes, I know. But you have to understand, Quarian. Very insular. We're a very insular. Saving the galaxy is cool, but it's not, you know, what have you done for me lately? To the average citizen. Our greatest dream is that one day we'll return to our home. That's a good goal. Again. But even if we so this is where you kind of learn about Tally's... Oh, Jesus. They're still I've been disconnected from Xbox Live. Until they're gone, well, our there goes the playthrough. Who would you need to bring back to make everyone happy? So this is kind of Tally's loyalty quest. It's not spelled out for you. They've and in fact, it's a little bit unfair unless you talk to every character after their main quest in your first playthrough like I did. Or someone tells you online. It's not easy. But, um... We'll, we'll get to it when we get to it. They never went beyond I'm gonna... The, her quest has, like, five missions. And, like, you don't know it's her quest until you finish the fifth mission. Independently. But I and it's... Man, it's it's cool, and it gives you a lot of experience. First we stop but... But... Worry about mm, but I'm gonna cut it. I'm going to cut it. Oh, my God. I'm doing it now. It wasn't easy growing up. All right, you know what? Nope, I'll do it. But now I'm old. Her mother wasn't around. She died when she was young. Her dad uh, is a military man. Um, he didn't show his love, obviously. Or love, actually. He he just kind of did things for her in action. And Tally never really felt like he was around. And he was always very distant. He was always glued to his work. Uh, Tally knows she lo he loves her. 
but he knows it was very hard growing up, you know, without his wife and the mother dying young. So it's a strained relationship, but you know, Tally, you know, it's a very relatable relationship, even in alien life. So there you go. Did I get that quest? Hold on. I got these two. Um. Crap. Nope. All right. Well. Yep. I know what I gotta do. All right. Well, this episode has gone on way too long, and I talked a little bit about Andromeda and about some of the characters. Um, here's hoping I talk about more characters later. Anyways, bye! Next episode, I promise more stuff will happen.